Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to the letter. In this episode, we're gonna try to finish up Isabella's story. Or, not her story, I think it's just her chapter. She's probably gonna be in the rest of the game unless they kill her off at the end of her story, which would be pretty fucked up. The food tastes less appetizing it tonight. A pity. One would think that someone who had been on a continuous binge of instant noodles would find a home-cooked meal enjoyable. But it isn't. Hunger isn't is hunger isn't what is gnawing at me tonight. Neither are my sore muscles. The TV runs loudly in the background, but what it says barely registers in my brain. It's hard when things you're trying to forget keep returning to the forefront of your mind. It distracts you, eats at you, devours you. I wish this would stop. I wish I wasn't the one who picked it up. I wish I was somebody else. In other local news, a woman was found dead in her home yesterday evening. Luxbourne police officials are currently investigating the crime scene, but has classified the case as homicide. Huh? The victim, identified as Rose Pamela Cooper, 33 years old, working as a real estate agent. What the fuck? That was green-haired lady! Rose? Discovered lying in a pool of blood in her two-bedroom flat with the words help me repeatedly written on the walls. God damn it, she was my favorite character! She had such nice hair! It matched her eyes! The Anselm Butcher? No. No. This isn't... This isn't what I want! This isn't supposed to happen! None of this is supposed to happen! No one's supposed to die. This is just stories, right? Legends! That's what everyone has kept telling me, so why in... And I... Immediately, I rushed to my study table in the search for my phone. My hand, cold from dread, clings so tightly to it as it as it touches edges. A piece of folded paper, the letter lying as unassumingly beside it, slips to the floor when I pick up the device. But I pay it no mind. There are more important things. Right now. Right now. I need to call her. I need to call her. I was with her. I was just with her not too long ago and she was okay. No. No. No, it isn't Rose, I'm sure of it. I just talked to her and a sob escapes me and hot tears begin to blur my vision. One after another, they trickle down, weighted by the very same guilt I refused to and I have uh, caring from the start. The same one I've been hiding from. The same one that has put the people I care about in danger. My hands shake as I navigate to Rose's number in my contacts list. She'll answer it, right? That's what she always does. She'll pick it up, tell me to turn down the waterworks, and call me a wuss afterwards. She'll answer. Please answer, Rose. Again and again I dial. Whispering. Praying. Pleading. Come on, Rose. Don't do this to me. Please pick up. I know. I know you're there, Rose. You're not dead. Please tell me you're not. This adds to the series of deaths and disappearances that has plagued Luxborn in the recent years. The authorities are currently looking at a possible link with the notorious Anselm Butcher case. The TV runs loudly in the background. A deafening static sounds from my phone speakers. But in my ears, I can only hear the screams. Her pleas. Her whispers. You know what, motherfucker? Fuck you. We are not safe. A buzzing sensation jolts me awake. My body still wants to sleep, to forget what I heard and what I saw last night. But it's there, nudging, prodding at me. Slowly I become aware of how awkward my position is and the aches at the company sleeping in a curled up position the night before. If I even slept at all, the memories are impossible to forget now that, now that, now that Rose is gone. They say it's easier when you say it out loud, and instead the words weigh heavier on me each time. She's gone. Because of me. Gone because of the letter I was too curious to look at. I should have been more careful. I should have kept my mouth shut. I should have destroyed it before anyone else had gotten involved. I should have. The notification light on my laptop blinks incessantly, mocking me. When I look at it, as if it's calling me back to the sense of normalcy. I check it nevertheless out of habit more than anything. Should I read that? 
If this was one of those typical days, I'd happily comply and get myself to our office. Today. Today my limbs just feel heavy. I'm not sure if she's going to read it, so I, I just will. To all BRC employees, in light of recent events, there will be an all-staff emergency meeting from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Attendance is a must. Company changes, new hierarchy, and policies will all be discussed during the meeting. Everyone is expected to bring a copy of their own attendance logs and sales reports for the last six months to be submitted for your respective managers for review. We are expecting everyone's cooperation. Thank you. Joanne Alice Schultz, BRC HR Manager. On one hand, going will keep me busy, take my mind elsewhere. On the other hand, the place in itself is a stark reminder of what my own fears have cost me. I should just... Ah, oh, shit. Okay, so this decision pretty much decides... Shit. If I go with the bottom one, I'm gonna have multiple... If I go with one, I think I'm gonna die. That... Shit, I keep forgetting about the mousing, but the one that has a dead end at the top? I think that's death. I really do. Do I go to work or stay at home? Fuck. I'm gonna save. Let's try to go to work at first and try to avoid that dead end. Moping won't get me anywhere. Well, I think being sad for her, one of her friends dying, co-workers, I think that's okay. I don't think going to work means you're not gonna mope. Maybe they'll say something about it or you'll find something out. Some information that could lead to action. This is just like one of those things, isn't it? You deal with it with a smile, no matter how bad things get and hope for the best. Although my whole body feels like a feels like lead and my limbs are sore, I push myself away from the chair and head for the shower. The letter I dropped on the floor last night flutters open as I pass by, unfolding for no one else but me to see. Every word written on it glares back at me. They sneer. They ridicule. Like living beings fully aware of what they've done. With a huff, I pick it up and shove it into my bag perhaps with more anger and frustration than I'm used to showing. This too I'll deal with. Somehow, I'll find a way to make things right. I have to, before it takes more people from me, even if I must do it on my own. Papers rustling, telephones ringing, feet shuffling. Overall, today looks like a typical working day at Briar Realty Corporation. Except it isn't. The air is thick with tension and unspoken questions. No doubt everyone present has already heard about Rose. That's a typo right there. Already? It says already. Yeah. Yeah. If they missed last night's report, they didn't likely see it in the morning news, in papers, or on various news sites on the internet. Everywhere is a bitter reminder. In fact, everyone's given me a wide berth as though the mere mention of Rose would be enough to trigger something in me. It's appreciated, but it only serves to create a bigger hole in the place Rose has left. After lunch, my boss calls for a meeting. I don't have to look up from my work to know what it's about. He's in a strange, pensive mood today, probably out of respect for a dead colleague. Oddly, I appreciate it more if he just shouted at me today. Anything is better. I'm sure you've all heard of what happened to Miss Cooper. She was a valued member of our team and she will be missed. There's no date for a funeral, yet. But those who wish to attend, kindly speak with your respective supervisors. By the way, has anyone heard about our still AWOL staff? None? HR, you know what to do. Santos, a word? In my office? Oh shit, that's me. At the end of it, I've given the entirety of Rose's workload. I had been given the entirety of Rose's workload, including finalizing the rights papers and have been promised an ample compensation for my efforts. I think he's expecting me to be happy about it. Instead, I immerse myself in work. I have to, anyway, if I want to forget.
Time flies when you do, and by the time I give notice, it's already late. I just got a fucking achievement called Employee of the Month. How disrespectful, Steam. Everyone's already gone, leaving me in the company of a radio and a member of our janitorial staff. I don't even know his name. Rose likely does. She remembers people easily like that. The Luxbomb Police Department continues its search for the following reported missing people. The radio blares one name after another. Hold on a second. Missing? Aren't they? Still, I have to check. Frantic, I turn back to my desktop. The loud tapping of my fingers against the keys fill the office for the better part of my shift as I look through everything. The background about the place, its history from the current owners, and lists of employees hired under BRC. And I'm right. Of course I am. BRC may have a lot of staff. They may have a lot of agents hired, but I remember those names anywhere. After all, they're also part of the crew who worked with us in preparing the mansion for the open house. Then the letters. No, that can't be. I hope it's not what I'm thinking. But Rose is... Something snaps into place in the fraction of a moment. These people, Rose, the letter... I need to... No. If it's like this, they still won't believe me. I have to make sure of it first. Evidence doesn't lie. That's what Ash often says, right? If I have proof, then maybe. I don't want to get my hopes up yet, but there may still be a way I can save them. The letter, my phone, papers, anything that will be useful. I grab them all and stuff them into my bag. I can't stay here. There's something I need to do. There's something those people should... The noise cuts sharply through the room, stopping my hand short of cramming a pin into my bag. Hello? Uh, anyone there? I don't trust this at all. I'll save right here since that's a pretty important choice. Someone must have left the printer open again. Oh fuck, shit's about to happen. I must have a fucking QT. Oh, this is where the death comes in if I could fucking right there. Right there beside the fucking butterfly. I can die here. I know it. I may be in a hurry, but if I don't turn it off, another person is certainly going to have a fit tomorrow over wasted company resources. Most of the time it's Rose who does the nagging, but... The clicking of my pen in my hand is a welcome distraction as I search for the said object. Each stride my feet takes as it also echoes throughout the empty workplace. I've lost sight of the janitor minutes ago, and with me being the only one left, the tapping of my feet against the one floor is something I soon learn to appreciate. It doesn't take me long to find it. By the time I turn it off, five pages are already strewn about on the ground, the paper tray having also been left ajar. Sighing, I pick each of it up and place it somewhere proper. But the page that greets me the next makes my blood run cold. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. The chill that makes way up my spine is numbing as the day in the attic. Dude, I don't wanna... Just fuck it, I don't care if this is extra text I gotta click through, I'm fucking nervous. These fucking QTEs are difficult. The sheets crinkle under my tense grip. All I can hear is my breathing as it rasps through the gritted teeth. But before I can gather myself, take the first steps out of here, total darkness suddenly envelops me. As if hearing every horrid thought Running inside my head right now, something snaps. A soft creak grating through the thin veil of stillness that has descended in my room. Every muscle, every bone in my body goes rigid at the sound. Familiar. So familiar now. Yet my own traitorous curiosity still presses me to take a careful peek over the cubicle's walls. Don't fucking do it, Rose! Oh shit, you're not Rose, you're Isabella, you're alive. It's her. Standing in the only exit of the office, albeit facing away from me. She doesn't even turn around for me to know it's the same misshapen face, tattered clothes, and unsightly gait. Same person in the attic. I take a step back. The pen I'm holding slips from my hand, and... Uh, the entire head turns fresh as fugly as shit. A scream almost escapes my mouth and I duck under the table as quickly as I can. My heart is pounding hard against my chest. I can hear the bone-chilling sounds of her walk, the weird clicking that follows her, the telltale squelch of something wet as she walks towards me, nearer and nearer. The sounds are slowly getting louder, 
The only thing keeping the whimper from escaping me is my hand as it covers my mouth. Someone, please save me. Anyone. Uh, is it gonna be the same letter I gotta click? Oh shit, it's... I can't see! What the fuck? Stop! What? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy king give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As and lead us not into temptation. I can't fucking see! Us from evil. Amen. I can't fucking see! I can't fucking see! I can't fucking see! Stop! Don't do this shit! What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, come on. Bitch! Game over? What? What the fuck did I do? I can't see. I can't see. Our fuck give us the stand leader. What the hell? Okay, I gotta figure out how to fix this. What the shit? Okay, let's try this again. I hit escape and I see nothing. What the fuck was that? So I gotta click somewhere. Or forgive us and lead us not. Shit. God damn it! What's also this relationship thing? What? What's fucking new? Okay. Okay. So, I just looked up a walkthrough for the game, and apparently everyone else can see the cutie except for me. So, okay, anyone. Close my eyes, muttering and continuous. I don't care. There it is. What the hell? I can see it now. Oh, cool. Because I went to the options. Like, I saw how the QTE was played, so I was going to try to do it blind. Like, you would have to hit it in the circle, at, like, in between the noises of the clicks. Like, you had to hit it in the middle of the noise. And I was like, okay, yeah, I think I can do that with my eyes closed or well, with no picture. Like, I think I should get some picture now. Anyways, uh, yeah, then I was like, I'll just turn it to easy mode on the QTEs. That'll help. And then, the, But there was an option to skip the QTEs, but I didn't want to do that. Dots. The seconds. Minutes stretch out before me agon agonizingly. Is she gone? Slowly I open my eyes to take a peek. I don't dare move or make a noise. In the face of such terror, I can only beg, let out silent pleas to whoever is out there. Am I supposed to be seeing something right now? God fucking hope I, I'm not supposed to be seeing anything. Please, please don't let her notice. I... I want to live. Oh. It's Hannah's story now. Okay. Well, this is the 17th. Okay, 24th is where we were at before, so this takes place days in. I got Hannah's profile, okay. Birth date, April 30th, Taurus, 31 years old. She's a 5'7", wait, she's, her occupation is a heiress, former finance manager, she's British, she's Angelican, she has a master's in business administration, I don't fucking want to read all that. Of Luxburn upper classes, Hannah is used to living a life of luxury. Absent parents made her crave attention, though something she gained from her private tutors and nannies instead. It was never enough, however, she studied hard in order to make her parents proud, going into business so that she can work alongside them. 
The challenge in her otherwise privileged life was certainly a thrill for her. At the very least, she had many suitors dating different men and women, but it was for work that she met Luke. It was love at first sight for her. Upon her parents' death, Luke proposed to her. It was the move that led to the merging of the Wright Enterprise and Evans Incorporated and her subsequent retirement. The seven-year marriage is strange, but Hannah tries the best to make it work. Okay. That is gonna... Like... <sighs> shit, dude. I'm just gonna cut this up and put it on the other episode. I was wanting to stop once I got to Hannah's part, but... I've been recording for like three minutes. Okay, anyways, uh... I'll see you in the next one, in the next chapter, Hannah's chapter, I guess. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye. For the second time.